Welcome to the AI Wisdom Podcast. We have Nate Roybal with us today. He's making every system a source of truth. Uh, he's partnerships and strategy at Sincari. Uh, dyslexia and ADHD are his superpowers. We, we may talk about that. His AI tech stack nowadays and everything he's accomplishing in the realm of sales with AI. This pod is presented to you by podpair.com. If you want to start or scale your podcast, go to podpair.com. Nate, welcome to the pod. Tell me a bit more about yourself and seeing Carrie. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so I'm a director of partnerships at a company called Syncery. Uh, We make data clean in every system it connects to. And um, yeah, I've been here for about two and a half years. Uh, been in SaaS for about 10 and uh, yeah, sales and partnership for as long as I can remember, basically. So first, how do you make that ADHD and uh, dyslexia a superpower for you? Yeah. Um, and so I really think it's important. Um, especially things like dyslexia. Um, I, as a child, I grew up uh, with a lot of negativity around that kind of stuff. And uh, regularly people told me, uh, you know, I'd never graduate college. I'd never, you know, I should just go to a trade school. I should just, you know, you're never going to, you're never going to get there. So just don't try. Right. Um, and so I think it's important for people like me that, have, you know, have been successful and, you know, hopefully I continue to be successful to go out and put themselves out there and talk about the fact that they had these struggles. Right. Uh, so other people can see that it's possible. Because as a kid, I really didn't have much of that, right? I didn't really see like people with dyslexia or ADHD, um, one, talking about it, and two, doing anything significant. So I was just like, oh, maybe I just have to be a construction worker, right? Um, and uh, not, not that there's anything wrong with that, but that just wasn't the path that really called to me. Interesting. And do you feel that sales has helped you to have some balls and like put that forward on your LinkedIn profile without feeling any shame? Yeah. Yeah. I think it has. And then it's also, um, you know, I think, uh, as I've gotten a little bit more senior, it's been a little bit more okay to do that. Right. As I was uh, younger, right. And you're applying for jobs. You're like, Fuck, I don't want to like, I don't want to lose a job prospect based on something I say. No, I don't care. Now I'm at a place where I'm like, you don't want to hire me because I'm dyslexic and ADHD. I don't want to work with you. So that's great. Um, I, and also, you know, I think that, uh, that's a whole different thing than it used to be, right? Like uh, it doesn't, need to be perfect spelling and it doesn't need to be perfect handwriting and it doesn't need to be you know perfectly focused all the time um things like ai help us with a lot of those things things like spell check it's like all this stuff exists now right so. and yet yeah, ai must be helpful there but in terms Extreme. of the cells um aspect like how much you use the gpts you were telling me about are they like employees of yours, SDRs of yours, like how is that working nowadays in your company? Yeah, and it's actually funny. I uh, When I started building a kind of wild wild hair rodeo, I just was like, ah, I just want to build this thing and I wonder if it's possible. And they came out with the custom GPT uh, marketplace and I, I just started going and it was not valuable for a long time. Um, I would use it to check emails, do some basic stuff. Um, and then around Christmas time, I got to a place where I was like, oh, wait, this is actually writing some good stuff. This is almost net new um, and some of the stuff it's putting out. And I started to share it with some of the other folks on my team. Um, very quickly, it was picked up by uh, the SDR on our, our team uh, who saw, oh my God, I can now get all my emails checked and I can check my sequences and maybe it'll even give me some baselines to build my own sequences. Um, kind of try to tell them not to use those verbatim, but you never know what's going to happen. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'd say like uh, the AI for me is a, a full, like almost a full EA copywriter person, right? And regularly people in the organization are looking for, hey, we needed a blog topic on this. Cool. Well, I've already trained these these GBDs and I can create a topic on anything or tell us how to topically talk about things, competitors, whatever, right? And then as far as it goes, um, I use it deeply to go off and do a lot of my research, right? So um, it's easier and partnerly, surprisingly, uh, because I can go off and these people list out, hey, these are the practices we focus on. Like, okay, cool. Here's the practices, pulled on the practices, list them all out, now I'll call in a Syncree expert bot to go tell me how Syncree aligns with these practices, which ones we should focus on, and then I should, how I should outreach to those people about the collaboration, right? Um, on the sales side, it's a little harder because research is, uh, you gotta be specific about what you want research today. AI is not that smart. And so you have to be really specific or you have to use a tool that's built for it. In terms of partnerships, like, can you ask like Claude, like who would be a potential good partner? like? I must guess there's a better prompt than that or a better question for Claude to fetch his whole database of actual knowledge and return, okay, this guy might be a good 
uh, partner because of X, Y, Z reason that weren't obvious to our human brains. Yeah. Uh, specificity is super important on the AI side. So like, I think that there's so many people out there that expect AI to be a magic bullet and like do all these things for them. And then when it doesn't do the thing the way that they think it's going to, it should do it. It just, they just give up. Right. And really it's an instruction driven application. Right. So like if you, it, it gives you the wrong answer, it's because you made a mistake giving instructions. Most people don't realize that. Right. And so um, I think that, um, no, it definitely cannot be in a place where it tells me which partners to go after. Right. But you have to look at AI as a collaborator. Right. And so what AI is really good at chunking through large chunks of data, helping you make sense of things, giving you maybe better writing approaches, uh, think of other approaches you didn't think about, brainstorm stuff, really good. Right. Uh, specific research, which you can do through some, right? GPT has a uh, web, Claude doesn't, right? Um, so GPT, you can have it go look up websites and bring down data sets, right? Reality is there's so many websites out there, it could not possibly go out and do that level of research for you. It doesn't know how, and even if you told it how, it would be too much to give a model to have to go through each step, unless you did one step at a time, and then it's no longer valuable, right? Um, and so, yeah, I would say, um, AI is working best when you go out, you do the research and you say, cool, I've done the research. Here's the company name and their website. Now I need this specific data set. Or I need you to tell me how we sell to them. Cool. It can do that, right? As long as you can give it enough data behind, uh, you know, why they buy and all that stuff too, in the background on the model side. Right. Then in terms of outreach, are you using tools like Play to bring you a bunch of nice prospects through very personalized emails i've done a bit of clay um can't i didn't want to pay for it so i haven't done enough of it um but um yeah i i think it's a it's a super powerful tool for for all of those reasons around the enrichment side and the building a list side i don't know how i feel about it in terms of building personalized messaging just because i feel like rag still works much better for most things like you have to have some semi-trained data set for it to look at, to understand context for your business. Because if you try to generate that in a single clay thing, unless you're selling something that is very simple and has a very simple value prop, you are not gonna do okay. It's gonna just come out with something that sounds like marketing speak and it's not valuable and it sounds personalized, but when you actually use a rep, this, this happened to me, right? Use a rep, you look at it, you're like, oh, this is great. And then you like take a step back, you look at it the next day and you're like, oh, this is a generic marketing email and it's good for generic marketing copy, but it doesn't move the needle for a sales motion, right? And so you still have to be a human being in the process of AI, but it's getting there. And who do you target at that scene, Carrie? Yeah, uh, we target, uh, well, I mean, I'm on the partner side, so I'm targeting partners a lot, but uh, as far as it goes, we target uh, anywhere from, you know, 200 employees and above typically, unless they want to white label our product for integrations, then we'll target down market because they might need it at a lower market. Talk to a seed company today that might uh, might buy Syncry for uh, for embedding, uh, but uh, on the other side, I mean, mostly the lower mid market. So it's like five hundred employees and above is probably like our sweet spot. All the way up to like two thousand, and then beyond two thousand, there's so many politics and and stuff in the room that it just becomes hard to get something as large as Syncry off the ground. And it's basically like supercharge. Um... BI, like what's the, what do you offer as value and, and how do you do it differently than the others? Because your solutions start at, at 5K. So yeah, why should That's I pay mind. 5K? <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's not cheap, right? Um, so, I mean, think of it more in the lens of like a, a Zapier with a Snowflake, right? So it's like an, oh, it's almost like an MDM platform, right? But it's low code, no code. And it's, it's, it's much simpler to the point where you can take on a much smaller use case, right? But what we see is most businesses don't have trusted in sync data, right? At best, most companies have a single source of truth that is almost never accurate, but that is their one source of truth, right? And they're like, okay, well, we're going to keep this as clean as possible. It's probably Salesforce. But the reality is that if you have sales reps and they're working out of three systems, each of those systems has to have the same correct data because otherwise your sales reps not only lose time, be contacting different people, but also like trying to figure out which one's the right one each time they're reaching out, right? Which is painful, right? As a rep, like I hate it and I've done it before, right? Um, and so same thing for marketing. Hey, if I'm building a campaign, I need to understand this customer as their existence in sales and CS and finance, right? Have they paid us? Are they happy? Are they sad? Whatever, right? And so if you can connect the dots between all those and do what we call a distributed source of truth, we want to turn every system 
somebody's working in into a trusted, up-to-date data set. Right? So like if you're working in it, it's right. And if you make a change in it, it changes everywhere else at the same time. Right? It just does it. Right? That's our goal. Right. So in terms of, uh, yeah, your cell, your current cell system, what else do you do to get in touch with your prospect other than cold email outreach, LinkedIn? Is there some remarketing? Tell us about your full pipeline. That's a good question. Um, yeah, so we definitely do, um, we definitely do ads. So we do some ABM in terms of ad roll and, and, um, and stuff like that. Um, we do events. Uh, we're doing some road shows coming up and then we're of course going to trade shows. Um, We've got Marketo, uh, where you send emails, newsletters, those kind of things, um, webinars. Um, and then, you know, of course, we've got uh, things like Ample Market on the sales side, um, Cognizant, uh, Six Cents, a lot more probably that I'm not even thinking of right off the bat. Um, Salesforce is in there somewhere. Uh, yeah. Tell us about, um, yeah, these GPTs that you're building. If you could like share your screen or like tell us about what they do precisely and yeah, show us your systems there. Yeah, I'm happy to. Let me, um, I was not prepared, but I am getting prepared. So let me do this. <laughs> uh, uh, it's going to be a window because it's in my, I always put my GPTs in a separate, um, separate instance of Chrome because it makes things easier. It doesn't want me to share it. All right, hold on. There it is. All right, so obviously perplexly up there on the page, right? So I've built a, a good number, right? Transcript doesn't work too well. Partner profiles, okay. Uh, something to help me build GPTs. Uh, something expert on my own career, right? Resume, uh, LinkedIn, everything. That was me. Um, okay. Email writing bot, which I took basically a bunch of websites that are listed out email best practices. Just yeah. scraped them, grabbed them, copy paste, put them in the GPT, right? Uh, it's okay. And then I've got a Syncry product bot, which um, this is the one I work most heavily on, right? So let me just jump in give you a, an idea of like at a GPT, right? So set of instructions, um, which has been iterated multiple times, right? Um, and then, what is it, 12, uh, 14 training docs, something like that, right? And mm. repeatedly I iterate on this, doing doing some basic stuff, like asking it what it doesn't know. Like, hey, based on what you know today, right? what features do you need to know more about, right? Or if I was gonna go sell this solution, does it make sense to you, right, or whatever? Right, just kind of testing it and then filling in those gaps with more research and more data sets, right? But then I get an output where I can do things like, um, how does Synchrony compare to ETL tools? And we'll see what it says. It's just usually pretty fast too, because it's not over amounts of training, right? Um, but now I can get a, a very detailed breakdown feature by feature, right, of how we compare right, where we're better, where we maybe aren't better, right? And actually I have my teams be able to almost write a full blog post off of these sometimes, right? Um, so it's, it's actually almost fully production ready in some ways, shapes or forms, um, depending on how you want to use it. Um, but yeah, I can kind of go off and build a competitive analysis against anybody. So one of the, you know, one of the, I had a partner recently say, hey, we're, we're, we're investing deeply in the Microsoft ecosystem right now. Um, we don't have time to spend it. I'm like, great, would it be helpful if I, if I wrote up how Synchrony works alongside the Microsoft ecosystem? That would be amazing. Can you do that? Yeah, it takes me 10 minutes, right? To <laughs> send it over and they're like, they're mind blown, right? And it took me no, well, it took me the training time, right? So there's the investment and the training time. But after that, it just works, right? For the most yeah. part. And a lot of times I'll run this, this same output through like a Claude after the fact, um, just to double check everything. Yeah. When do you think Claude will have its own like version of GPTs? Well, I mean, the, so if you read through the docs, for the most part today, it says like, hey, uh, we want people to bring their own regs. So like they want people to build the API um, and do their own reg kind of uh, scenario. I think they'll probably be very, very quickly forced to do it uh, for people. Um, I mean, they've got Jasper, they've got Copy, they've got Writer. They're all out there doing that already, right? Um, to be fair, they're they're all doing it off of GPT, right? Which we all know is limited and... Um, there's going to be a lot of people that come out with competing models to do specific things that are going to beat out GPT very, very quickly here soon. Um, and the people that standardize in GPT are probably going to be uh, a little bit, a little Is bit. Is everyone at Seekary expected to build their own bots or? No, no. In fact, nobody knew I was doing this. <laughs> um, I actually uh, was at my SKO this year and uh, someone mentioned, oh yeah, I did that with Nate's bot. And I see, I was like, what? What? Um, and I walked my laptop over to him and I was like, yeah, just type in a thing, just like I did right now. 
typed in, and he's like, holy cow, this is great. We got to do something with this. You know, they still haven't really done anything with this, but uh, <laughs> they all think it's really cool, which is nice. Um, all I know is it's saving me multiple hours a day, and that's enough for me, right? Uh, I, It's just like anything else, right? Like, I can try to get other people to adopt. Early adopters, we deal with a lot more um, BS, right? So we're like, oh, wrong output. Okay, let's do it again. Oh, same query, different output. Okay, that's fine. Do it again, right? We don't expect it to be perfect. We just expect it to work sometimes and give us value. And so it is at that level. It's, it's at an early adopter status for the most part. AI is not ready for broad consumption. Most people who use it get like negative value out of it. <laughs> like they, they literally like just waste their time. Do you feel that the future of work is like freelancers managing a bunch of bots being hired contractually by companies? That's interesting. Um, I actually more thought along the lines of like, hey, um, there's going to be very specific AIs that are trained to do certain things and you're going to call them in when you're doing certain tasks, right? So it's got some level of human observation, and human guidance, but the AI is very good at doing a very specific task. Like, hey, I need to go research all these companies and I'd be a good partner fit, right? Okay, cool. I can do all the tasks associated with that, but you still want to have me look over it because, you know, it might be someone we've talked to before. Or it might be somebody that like we have a relationship with, or it might be someone that like, you know, uh, is actually a bad fit or has a competing product that the AI didn't find, right? There's all kinds of little things like that. What do you think about um, AI governance? Like, what if your boss was like, yo, put that shit off, you know? Like, it's, <laughs> it's not representing us well that AI is saying some stuff that does not reflect what the company is about. So uh, what do you think about the limitations of it? Yeah. I mean, there's, and there's obviously the limitations, right? I think that like, so if you get into like prompt engineering, I've been doing this lately where like, you could like literally put in a prompt, like, Hey, are you going to be proud of this output? Right. And you actually get a better output, right. From asking it to like, Hey, is this something you'd be proud of? Right. Take a, take a step back and just look at it before you send it to me. And it does better. It's crazy. Right. But like that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. I, I would say that there, there is a lot of like governance that needs to happen in this world. I think a lot of people are putting in stuff to do all kinds of crazy things. And at the same time, people are expecting AI to be a silver bullet for all kinds of problems. And most people have zero understanding of the value that AI brings or where it brings it. And so they just like, start, you see this in the market, right? They're throwing AI at everything, right? And it's, it's literally all just a skin GPT. It's, it's zero value in my mind. Some people find a lot of value in it too, because for some reason they can't go sign up for GPT themselves. The writing so. is quite fascinating because it's like, okay, an AI doesn't have these emotions, but hasn't. It's trying to understand what uh, pride means, and pride probably means to humans that it's something that is reviewed. Uh, they put a bit more energy into it so that they don't feel bad afterwards. And because of that, the AI understands it in its alien brain that it needs to do better. Yeah. So it would do, it does better if you tell it the pride thing then rather than like do your best, right? Yeah. So the, I mean, the, the best the best secret I've got for, for AI right now is literally go, and this is based on tree of thought, prompt engineering, if anyone wants to look it up, or you can ask GPT, it'll tell you what it is. But essentially um, you can go in and, and if you go in and say, hey, here's what I'm looking for is the task. Do it in these steps. Step one, create a virtual workspace for it. Always tell us create a virtual workspace that has place to take notes, right? And then you have it do very specific things, right? So I can actually do like one of the other ones I did the other day, which was a very, I got a phenomenal output from. I basically said, hey, here's all the pain points that I think my prop, my, 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 so my platform solves. Here's uh, the problem. No, sorry. Here's all the solutions my, my platform offers. Here's all the problems people are coming to us with, right? Now I need you to map up a value prop against every problem and potentially multiple against every problem. And if you don't find one, make a new one, right? And do this with every iteration you can think of and then pick the top four and then be your own copywriter, take a step back, review both lists, make sure that that is the right list that you would actually come out with. If it's not, edit it again, right? And then, and then give me the final output of that and make sure that it's something you're proud of, right? And it comes out with some amazing stuff, like really, really good stuff. Yeah, and then like, give it some demographics and tell it to tell a story that has a high probability of being relatable by this person 
And then if it would do that at scale, knowing the location of people, just like knowing where you live, it, there's so much data there. Um, yeah, and scraping pretty much all their info. It, I don't think it would be creepy. I think it'd come up with like genius stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and there's, I, so I advise for some software companies and you know, I partner with some too. Um, I don't want to do much name dropping on your on your podcast, but essentially like there's some really good tools out there that can do enrichment around just relationships now, right? So like, hey, I want to understand who this person is related to in my company, but also like what they care about. They they like, they usually like go to soccer games, things like that. And for some reason, they have this data, at least for the US, right? Um, and I'll start another person that's built a, a llama based rag solution that sales loft sales for everybody in the world is talking to you right now because they're the only ones that have built it not on gpt out there right and so we're seeing more of, of that kind of stuff as well um i don't that really answered your question i was kind of like tangenting there a little bit no that's great um what do you why do you think llama performs better than gpt i don't i just think that they a purpose-built model for emails is much more capable than a gpt that you've skinned to do emails right and we all see this i mean if anybody who's used gpt to try to write emails has seen this right never use i hope you're well it always uses i hope you're well every time no matter what you do right and you're like all right i'm just going to delete it and i'll rewrite those first sentence. that's fine right um but like yeah i think that if you can build the next generation which hopefully is is what this guy's got right is like hey can I do something that doesn't really need iteration from a human? I can do it like almost completely standalone, right? And it's good or better than a human, right? That's the thing, right? Because right now, yeah, we can do it. It's not as good as a human and it's certainly not better, right? Uh, well, unless you're like a junior entry-level salesperson that doesn't know what you're doing. But, you know, I think like in general, um, yeah, there will be more as the next wave is going to be people that stop skinning GPTs, built their own AI models to do things specifically. And they're very, very good at those things. And they're going to apply them and they're going to beat GPT every time because they're really good at that specific task and they're going to make money off it, right? Um, or they'll get bought by some other company, right? Like a lot of these companies, sales lot all these guys are looking to acquire that company. Yeah, because your thesis is that um, the open AI team didn't, feed a lot of emails they fed wikipedia reddit and all of these places but the gpt might not know really what's a good email sound like maybe formal communications professional communications but yeah that's not in the cold email writing style of things um but my brain's telling me why am i not just uploading all my charles copy in a gpt would that gpt write epic cold email if it if I tell it to just write with my data? It does pretty good. It does. But does it do as well as something that didn't have distractions from all these other data sets that it doesn't need to write emails, right? Um, probably, right? And so what happens when the GPT runs, right? Is it runs through its entire model, tries to understand what you want, and then it goes and tries to give you an output that it's seen similar things like that in the past in its model, right? But if it, one, if it doesn't have access to a bunch of cold emails, it's never done, right? That's a problem. And then two... If it's, if it's also drawing from, hey, I'm emailing a partner and I might be very verbose, right? Or I'm emailing like a marketing email and that's like, hi, hope you're well, right? It's very different than a like, hey, I can solve this problem. Do you want to talk, right? Which is sales emails, best practice, like three sentences if you can. This is what I can do. You want to talk? Yes? No, right? Um, GPTs don't have that nuance, right? And and like, I think that, I think a, a, a custom built AI model will will be the first thing to get there. And that's why we all hate marketing emails, by the way. Do these things even work? Like I'm checking zero marketing emails nowadays. I do check sub stacks and beehives that are well written, direct to the point, value based, but like do email marketings even work nowadays? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I mean, I could draw from, you know, all kinds of stuff, but uh, I mean, in general, I think we've all seen a rapid decline of anything marketing related working unless it's community driven or actual people boots on the ground at an event, talking to people, making stuff happen. Right? But like people are craving human to human, right? And like the, the more AI is being pervasive, the more people will crave the human connection, right? And I think that's, uh, we're seeing this, like in the last two years, we've seen cold outbound just, you know, plummet because it's so hard to do at, at any scale and add value. That is unless you're 
Charles Cormier. Um, but yeah, no, I, I mean, yeah, I, I do agree. People crave. That's why you have um, a job, right? Because you're, you're really good at it. <laughs> yeah. You need to interrupt patterns and not write the same way most write and always think value, I, I think. So, but yeah, I think. I think my AIs will actually bet, do a better job at being Charles than Charles himself, which will be interesting. Um, they'll say the right thing at the right time. They'll brief me. And yeah, I do think that human time will become more valuable, but then there's clones, right? Um, and these clones are already being put forward. Just today I was checking a company that actually does that. It's quite impressive. And yeah, like it, it's going to be an interesting future to see like how all of this goes. But and and yet like uh, GPTs, um, then it was Gemini, then it was Claude. Do you feel that GPT-5 will be deployed this year? I, I do. And I think that's going to be really, really, I'm really excited. I'm really interested to kind of see one, how, you know, how they roll that out on the marketplace with the GPTs they've already built. If it's just native, that would be phenomenal, right? And then it would just be like literally just like a boost in productivity and capability. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I also want to start playing with some of like the extension tools. I'm like, I'm just not a developer. I'm not there yet. So I, I need to bring in some some friends or something like that to help me with some of the context. There you go. Well, thanks, Nate, for today. Where can people find out more about you? Uh, LinkedIn. Check me out, Nate, Nathan Rebel, or uh, Come over, check out Sinkery. Um, I'm, I'm all over the place. You can find me somewhere. <laughs>